Hey, space friends, this week I'm talking about pulsars. Pulsars essentially stands for pulsating stars, although that speaks more to how they appear to us than how they actually are. A pulsar begins its life as a star, 10 times more massive than our sun or more. That star then, when it runs out of fuel, it begins collapsing and then explodes into a messy, beautiful supernova. The remaining avocado pit within this scattered cosmic guacamole continues collapsing down and spinning until it's so incredibly dense that one teaspoon of it would weigh about a billion tons here on Earth. This heavyweight avocado pit is a neutron star. So what about the pulsating star part? Well, neutron stars are not only impressive in being heavyweight champions, but they're also sort of magneto supervillains in a sense. Neutron stars have magnetic fields that are one trillion times as strong as the one here on Earth, causing it to radiate out light, X-rays, gamma rays, visible light, all sorts of light from its north and south poles. Those neutron stars, while they're spinning, if those north and south poles face Earth, we see a pulsating light, and thus we call it a pulsar. The first pulsar was unexpectedly discovered by Jocelyn Bell Burnell in 1967 and was nicknamed LGM-1 for Little Green Men 1 because they didn't know what it was just yet. The pulsar kept pulsing every 1.3 seconds like clockwork. You may be familiar with the iconic Joy Division Unknown Pleasures album cover, which prominently features a scientific visual visualization of this first discovered pulsar. What you might not know is that this is a computer-generated illustration created in 1970 by a graduate student of Frank Drake's named Harold Kraft Jr. The illustration is a stacked plot of recorded pulses at the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico. Harold wanted to show that even though the pulsar itself is reliable, the shape of the pulse inside the pulse is irregular, and it shows how it interacts with various space stuff before it arrives here at Earth. Interesting side note, Harold actually didn't know that his computer-generated illustration had been used as Joy Division's album cover nine years later until a colleague told him about it after it had been released. Anyway, pulsars are so reliable that they were used as a map by Carl Sagan and Frank Drake on the Pioneer plaque and the Voyager Golden Record as a way of showing where we exist within the cosmos and even the time period that the spacecraft was launched within. And now we're even trying to use pulsars as a way of letting spacecrafts navigate themselves throughout the universe essentially creating driverless spacecrafts. It's not such an out there concept, although I guess it literally is. Even here on Earth, us humans wouldn't be able to navigate using GPS without the help of things very far out in outer space. I'm not talking about GPS satellites, although they are definitely a large part of it. I'm talking about quasars, which are supermassive black holes very far out in outer space that illuminate gas surrounding them so brightly that we can see them very clearly even though they are more than 1 billion light years away. Quasars act like reliable landmarks, or I guess space marks in this case, because they allow us to know the exact orientation and shape of the Earth as it changes due to gravitational forces like the Sun, the Moon, and even within its inner molten core. This is important because if we didn't have things like quasars to help us with GPS, even though the satellites could locate how far away we are from the satellite itself, they wouldn't know exactly where on the Earth we were because it wouldn't know the orientation of the Earth at that given time. Equally, pulsars act like natural clocks that can help spacecraft navigate. On the International Space Station, there's actually an experiment on board that is demoing for the very first time successfully that we can actually use pulsars to help spacecrafts navigate themselves. Right now, the International Space Station experiment is the size of a washing machine and is only looking at X-ray pulsars, which is a small subset of the over 2,000 pulsars that are out there that we know of so far. But a new concept uh, funded by the NASA Innovative Advanced Concepts Program is looking into using radio pulsars because a satellite might only need a one meter squared antenna or array to be able to detect them, allowing for that one meter squared antenna or array to fold up inside of a CubeSat, allowing for many future small spacecrafts to road trip across the solar system by themselves. That's it for me this week, space friends. Remember to subscribe on YouTube. It's still a growing, budding YouTube channel, so your subscriptions and promotions definitely help. And if you can, join Patreon to help support me creating videos like this one, and you can get cool space stuff and just generally geek out with me. See you next time.